Good morning. <laughs> That's a big audience. Uh, we're here to discuss, special session was called in order to discuss the multi-municipal fire funding agreement and the formula for 2019's budget. And um, so where would you like to start? As far as uh, I believe you want to go over the, um, do you, do, did you guys get a chance to look at the PowerPoint presentation that was forwarded? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if you didn't mind, we'd like to just give you some commentary around that as well um, through the different slides and, and just share um, the background that was covered. So um, do you want us to jump right in and start with that? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, well, first of all, I wanna thank you for hosting the meeting, beautiful facility, uh, and it's good, you know, probably the first time uh, since I've been a supervisor that we've been able to get together as a group. Um, so I want to thank you. Um, I wanna thank uh, Luke and Scott, Dale and Bonnie as well for uh, the support that they were uh, through this process. Um, really important topic, uh, I think, both for our boards as well as the municipalities. Uh, the fire service certainly does affect uh, the, the welfare uh, of our constituents. Um, so I uh, wanted to start out just by saying, uh, you know, we went through um, the multi-funding uh, agreement, the multi-municipality agreement. Um, I was a little disappointed in what came back to your board, um, you know, reflective of our August 22nd meeting. Uh, so I just wanted to be able to talk through that um, a little bit. Uh, as I said, a little, little disappointed when we watched um, the public video, it didn't feel that it, that it accurately reflected the meeting that we had on the 22nd. So we just wanna use this opportunity to sort of get that public record cleared up a little bit too. Um, just to, in terms of big ticket items, we discussed past funding from uh, West Brandywine. We discussed our ability to, to actually be able to afford East Brandywine Fire Company um, as a fire company and us as a, a township in terms of how much revenue we have available uh, to be able to support that. Um, we discuss the differences that exist between the two townships. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's always a challenge when you try to bring two municipalities together to use a shared service. There's different capabilities that the townships have and there's different needs. Uh, and sometimes the service may be better aligned to one than it is to another. So I think it's important for us to be able to talk through that and we did discuss that. We looked at the funding model. Um, we spent a fair amount of time making arbitrary tweaks. We really didn't have a lot of data behind some of the adjustments that we were making. It was more about trying to, to get to a level of funding that could be supported by East Brandywine <coughs> and by West Brandywine. Um, then we did uh, have a brief discussion on the East Brandywine Fire Company budget, and then we left it with uh, a number of follow-ups that we had. So that was sort of what that August 22nd meeting, the topics that it covered. Uh, and then we had used a presentation, which I'm gonna flip through some slides here. We first met with the fire company uh, and went through with them, just talking about ground rules and other things. Um, one of the key things that we did focus on and we did on the 22nd as well, we looked at the uh, July 1st um, was a <coughs> deadline in the multi-municipal funding agreement in which we should have had uh, people appointed. I, I think we were late from West Brandywine. We, we came out in mid-July with that. Uh, August 1st, um, we were supposed to have had reviewed the funding factors. Um, that was done on time, and I think we ended up knowing what population, number of calls, et cetera, that fed into those four categories. September 30th, the committee uh, was to approve an annu annual total municipal contribution. We did not um, come to that agreement at that point because we still had uh, questions about the, um, the agreement. And then November 1st is the deadline for the agreement it renews unless we provide written notice and non-reviewal. I think part of this meeting is for us to go through and understand where we net out about um, whether that would be renewed or not. So uh, one of the things, and, and again, these slides were shared on the 22nd. We went through and it just sort of teed up that funding coming from West Brandywine um, that uh, there's been a significant change in the level of contribution uh, you know, for even the years prior to 2012, there was just sort of a steady state uh, of money coming in around $40,000 per year. 2015, we, we certainly increased that um, Institute of Fire Service tax. 
2016, 2017, 2018, you can see that the funding levels have grown pretty significant on a percentage basis from uh, West Brandywine. I think this is reflective of a change out in our board, a change out in the value of the fire service, and, and really doing our part, recognizing that in those prior years, West Brandywine probably did not do their part in funding um, the fire company. So Jay, some of the things that we had heard at the prior meeting, I think we acknowledge that um, us as a partner in, in the early years, probably we weren't a, a partner that held up to our fair share. I think when we look at what we've done over the last few years, we've changed that uh, substantially, in part due to the agreement, but I think in part due to um, the change of the board and the board's commitment to, to funding the fire companies. So, uh, and I think we're all still, as West Brandywine, committed to doing that. Um, so uh, again, I think uh, a, a noticeable change in, in what we've done with that. Uh, and keep in mind, our, our fire service tax is $130,000 a year in terms of revenue. Um, and uh, we were spending far above that, um, pulling money from our general fund to be able to satisfy that request. So um, when we uh, first started talking, and it was more of a dialogue, we wanted to go through and say, uh, when we looked at how the funding model was broken up, it, it looked at QRS calls, it looked at fire calls, had them really weighted at the same value. Um, that probably wasn't um, a fair approach to take given the utility of, of equipment and capital that gets you know expended uh, on a QRS call as, as far less than a fire call. Um, so that was one of the things that we had just brought up as a challenge. Um, and then I think the, the more important thing for us was it didn't really adequately take into account um, the, the delta in existing tax, bur tax burden by the township. Uh, and we tried to bring some of that information to light to, to talk about um, what levels of service we as a township could afford. Because again, we really are two different townships. Um, when we look at real property tax, there's not much of a difference there. Um, we obviously raised our, our taxes in 2015, but if we looked at the average, you know, an assessed value of $200,000, just pick that number out of the blue, it doesn't matter what number we would have picked, the percentages would have uh, turned out to be the same. Um, but East Brandywine residents would have paid on average about $580 more in real property tax total uh, in terms of a burden versus West Brandywine. Um, but the real issue came when we looked at um, the impact that Coatesville School District has on our residents. Uh, and just to, to, to understand that, you know, East Brandywine's fortunate enough to be in the Downingtown School District. Uh, Downingtown's had no school tax increases over the last five years. Um, you know, fortunate to growth, good management, et cetera. Uh, Coatesville obviously has had some different challenges. Um, but the real important thing is to look at um, the cumulative impact over our residents. And when we look at the demographics, you know, we have a lot of seniors that live in our township. They're on fixed incomes. Real property tax is the tax that they're really paying. Um, you know, a few dollars a, a month, a few dollars a year make a big difference to those folks. And uh, the cumulative impact to the West Brandywine residents has been almost $7,000 more than the East Brandywine residents over that five-year period of, of what they're paying. So. Um, we just wanted to tee up that a lot of this isn't about just we don't want to pay a fair share. We certainly are paying what we can pay, but, but wanted to recognize that we have very different um, data uh, that, that support our townships and, and very different impacts that are real that our folks are living through. Um, so we struggled as a board to say that we have um, an obligation to provide fire services and uh, you know that could look like Fire Company A, which is a bucket brigade. It could look all the way, you know, to the far right, like Fire Company C, a, a really elite fire company. Um, and if if we could choose, and there were no other ramifications, I think we would all say, let's choose an elite fire company. Um, we want to be able to protect our citizens. Uh, and another big concern with us in in terms of really funding the fire companies is just looking what's happening to all the volunteer fire companies that that eventually. Uh, there's not going to be very many of those left. We're all going to be paying for paid fire services, and those costs are going to probably far exceed what we're paying now for the volunteer services. But in the world we live in today, we have a choice between, you know, fire company A, fire company B, and fire company C. And 
really what we were stuck with is this dilemma. Um, if, if, if it were just a choice, we certainly would all want to, want to choose fire company C, but, but where we're stuck is living in this balance uh, of saying, you know, if we went <coughs> too far to the left and chose, the, you know, a bucket brigade, we would probably see a lot of houses burn down and, and run into a lot of challenges. Um, the problem is when we exceed what we can afford as residents, then we have people moving out, and we have houses being foreclosed on, and again, a large senior population on fixed income. So we're stuck at trying to create that balance in between providing adequate fire service and, and not exceeding the burden in which our residents can sustain. Um, so the meeting outcome there, and, and again, I think, and I'll just go back, again, a really important point in this is two different townships and we can afford different choices. The multi-municipal agreement sort of forces us to come to a fixed number. And in, and in our case, if it were um, you know, not negotiable in terms of reopening the agreement, then the only lever that we have to play with is the funding level of the fire company. So until we can meter that down, until it meets something that we can afford, then that's the only lever that we have to play there from a finance standpoint. And we could do that. Um, the problem is it puts East Brandywine in a position where financially you can maybe afford a better fire company for your residents. Um, and we don't want to force your hand in being able to say, I ideally we'd like you to be able to have the kind of fire company with the, the, the things that they can provide at that level of service um, and, and not negatively impact it. So the meeting outcome on the 22nd, um, East Brandywine presented their budget. They wanted $400,000 um, as a municipal contribution. Um, we think that's a little rich uh, in, in terms of, especially on the, the capital that's being funded. Um, but we also recognize the eliteness and the quality of service that comes from East Brandywine. And we do think that you know they are one of the top fire companies probably in the state. Um, we stated that uh, if it were at 400, then our portion would have been 42.91% from the current funding model. That would have put the number at $172,000 um, from West Brandywine, uh, and that was not something that we could afford. Um, we stated that we would not be able to sign the agreement based on the current allocation model. So purely if the fire company budget stayed at 400,000, the funding model stayed where it was, it was going to exceed um, what we could afford. And as, as you can, uh, or as I said previously, um, our total municipal um, fire tax, or our fire tax produces uh, 130,000. Uh, we have to cover two fire companies because uh, we have two fire companies that serve uh, <coughs> West Brandywine Township. Uh, and then once again, we would be digging very heavily into our um, general fund uh, and, and that we can't continue to do. So um, we did explore a number of variants, uh, the breakdowns of the, the funding model. Uh, and I know that uh, the original model was broken down at 25% across all four indices, um, which I think were um, number of people, the property value, number of fire calls, and number of QRS calls. So, um, and that number, I don't, you know, if I was starting it, I don't know that I would have started in any different spot as well. Um, but uh, you know, when, when we look at it producing a, a 42% burden coming to West Brandywine at that funding level, we, we said at that point that, that we couldn't afford to sustain that. Um, so when we looked at the total dollar amount that we could afford, we said we needed to be somewhere around 33% uh, of that number um, if the funding level stayed at, um, at 400,000. Uh, went through a dialogue and uh, I think at that point East Brandywine said that they really couldn't afford um, the increase for them if we were at 33%, uh, then that would ratchet up the percentage that goes to East Brandywine, uh, and that would have been uh, problematic for East Brandywine. Um, so then we did start um, moving numbers around, and we eventually landed that said if we were to reduce the funding level from 400,000 to 360, using the new um, percentages that baselined that would put us up at 36%, and that would allow us then to fund at the 130,000. Now, one of the, you know, in that discussion, and I heard it in your public meeting, there was um, talk about tax increases, being able to go to 
Wagon Town Fire Company. Um, I think that certainly was a misunderstanding. Um, I don't believe that we articulated that. Uh, we have a fire service tax that produces a bucket of revenue. We pay for both fire companies out of that bucket of revenue. It has to be augmented with general fund money. So we already are planning on making another fire service tax increase. We did one four years ago. We have in our plans to do another one. Um, our plan is to make sure that we raise it to a level, uh, and I think I have it in the next slide, that will allow us not to have to make another tax increase um, for four to five years. So um, our next steps when we left that meeting, our, our understanding of them were that um, Jason and Luke were going to come back to the board, discuss the funding level, discuss the funding model, play back what I had shared in these slides, um, what the drivers were, uh, and why we landed where we were. Um, I went back to our board. Um, we had a follow-up meeting in which we shared the outcomes of the meeting, discussed the baseline funding, um, talked about the tax increase if, if we were at that funding, what number that would be. In this case, it would be a, a 0.195 mil increase over our 0.308 um, already, uh, which is about a 63% increase, but again, um, that would allow us to be able to sustain the funding of the fire companies with modest growth um, over the next five years. So, um, you know, there was not a discussion about raising taxes to support Wagontown. As we've showed you in the previous slide, the funding level um, is quite different between East Brandywine and Wagontown. Um, we do have to fund both fire companies. Um, and we did discuss in that meeting that if we can't come to an agreement, we have to provide fire services for our township, um, then we, we would be forced then into considering consolidating within one fire company. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it sort of felt when I heard the playback of the meeting that it was kind of a threat. I didn't think that we were threatening with it. I thought we were just being matter of fact of saying, you know, we have a fixed amount of money. We're gonna, we're, we, we anticipate that we will raise taxes um, to be able to keep that funding level and sustain it at, at where it is. We couldn't go higher than that. Um, and again, uh, you know, we would have to make whatever decisions we need to make of what can be afforded by the West Brandywine residents because we just cannot burden um, our seniors more than we already have. So I, with that, I would, I would ask, um, first of all, Jason, is, is there anything that I said here that we didn't discuss at that meeting? Okay, thank you. And Luke, uh, you were at the <coughs> meeting, you, you would agree? Uh, yeah, you'll have to, pardon me, I look straight ahead during the meeting because I've got the monitor in no, front no, of me. No, 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 that's fine. So I have been paying attention and I do agree with your your summary of the meeting. Okay, and and Dale and Bonnie, you were there as well. Um, did I miss anything or? I think that's accurate. Okay, so with, with that, I thank you for us having the opportunity to come in and, and at least get it uh, to a, an even base of, of what we think occurred, what was shared, what were the drivers were. And now we still have the hard work of figuring out, you know, what are, what are the next steps that we take? So from that. Uh, thank you for uh, going through that. I think it's been very helpful. <clears throat> we, we did get your uh, PowerPoint presentation, but it was shortly before the last meeting. And then we ended up with a discussion. So um, I have a couple of questions um, as a result of, uh, of reading through this and, and listening to you. And, I, and let me give you a little bit of background because it was uh, Doug Smith and I that, that did this three or four years ago, whatever it was. Um, and uh, specifically with reference to how the allocations were arrived at, um, first of all, we did some research and we found that there was a a history of these kind of uh, inter-municipal agreements uh, because there's some other townships, some other situations where fire companies are shared by townships, in particular Westchester and West Goshen. So we looked at that as a model, first of all. And I went into this uh, whole discussion with the mindset that um, this would be similar to probably the situation that you have with Wallace Township and your police force. You look at the total cost, you look at the services you're providing to that, and you have to come up with some, th to me it was simply, this is the cost, let's divide the cost. Um, as we went through that process, 
I was convinced that we had to add in factors um, that at least attempted to take into consideration some of the differences that you're pointing out in the townships and the township's ability to fund the fire company. So that's why we, in my thinking, we added in those factors for the uh, assessed value of the township and the, the population because we know we can look backwards at the statistics and see how many calls go to West Brandywine, how many calls go to East Brandywine, but really you have to look at uh, the potential calls in the future as well and the population is a factor of that. So we, um, we, we arrived at that 50-50 split between those factors, the characteristic factors, I'll call them, and then the operational factors. Um, and uh, going through your, listening to your presentation, um, I, I'm perfectly, I, I would understand that there may be a difference between the QRS and the fire calls, but what you proposed was that it was gonna be 80% based on characteristics and only 20% on operational matters. And, and I don't see any logic or rationale for that kind of a split between those two. I certainly would think that if we can get the background information from the fire company and look at the actual operating costs of Q QRS versus fire and the number of fire calls, the number of QSA, QRS calls, that there may be a rational, logical basis to change the allocation between those two and then adjust the formula to deal with that. Um, because we were sort of shooting in the dark three years ago when we, when we came up with that allocation between QRS and the, and the fire calls. Um, and I, I, th I thought, we, we had gone through an experience with Wallace Township sharing police, and um, I drew, even though I was not involved in that, that regional police was created before I became a supervisor, I was well aware of that agreement and how that was arrived at. And um, so we, we tried to build in some factors. Um, you going through the time deadlines makes me realize that uh, uh, Doug and I were maybe a little optimistic and, and maybe we do need to, one of the things that we need to consider besides the formula is adjusting these time deadlines because I think it would have been beneficial to have this conversation back in May or June rather than having it now when we're all in the, the midst of, the, yeah. the, of all the other budget issues. Yeah. Plus I think the fire company deserves to know where they're going a little more than a couple of months ahead of time. So uh, certainly I think those time deadlines could be adjusted and, and should be a, adjusted. Um, I, I find it curious that your, your slides with your fire company A, B, and C, um, which I think if anybody looks at that, th there's a suggestion that uh, East Brandywine Fire Company is Fire Company C, and I think if you talk to anybody in the fire company, they're gonna disagree with you because they certainly don't have the kind of facility that you're depicting here. The, the money, the, the, their cost is, uh, that is the cost to provide the service. Do they cost, I, I don't know whether they cost more per call than Wagon Town or Downing Town or anybody else. But um, we know that they are, they, they spend an, uh, an awful lot of time training and um, we, I agree with you, I think our whole board agrees that we do have an elite fire company, not because they cost a lot of money or they spend a lot of money, but because they're extremely dedicated, committed, and they train as hard as, uh, and I have friends that are professional and professionals in the fire service. They train as hard as any professional that I know, and they're all volunteers. Um, so I, I go back to, well, so I think your approach to this. Can I, can I comment on that? Because we also agree 
um, that they are an elite fire company. We, we think they are, right? They, they cost a lot, they spend a lot, and they perform a lot. And those are, you know, they all feed off of each other. And, and they are the kind of fire company they are because they're able to spend most of their time training and, and doing the things that they do and not out trying to, to, to be able to pay, you know, the lights. So with, without a doubt, I think our board would also agree. Um, and the depictions of A, B, and C, it's a bit sophomoric, but it was intended to be able to say, you know, you have a choice from anything from a bucket brigade to a really elite fire company. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I would say, um, in building that slide, East Brandywine is closer to the C. They, they are an elite fire company. Um, and, and it costs a fair amount of money um, to be able to sustain at that level. Um, and, and that's why we, when, when we look at what we pay out in fire services, um, we do pay a lot of money for East Brandywine Fire Company and, and we're willing to, to do that. We just had a cap on how much we could pay. So I, I just wanted to make that comment, Jay. Thank you. Well, and I, my concern is that the way you decided to present that difference depicts elite as being this fancy modern facility, not the facility that they have. And, and where they're spending money is not on glitz or superficial things. They're spending money on training and equipment, not on a fancy facility. Totally agree, but, a, but, but two pictures that look the same, I couldn't convey the difference. It was a sophomoric slide intended huh. to show that one costs more than the other. Um, so the, the way this agreement was structured and the way it was intended to operate was that the fire company was going to meet with the three townships and it was going to do a budget presentation and then we were going to um, work with the fire company on that budget <laughs> and then once the budget was basically signed off on, approved by all three municipalities, then the formula would be automatic in determining what the allocation was in each municipal responsibility. My understanding is that this year, um, when you had that budget presentation, there weren't any real issues with the fire company budget. And I, but that's, that's what has been conveyed to me. I don't know if that's accurate or not. You did mention you thought it was high, and, and I will discuss the capital reserves issue if that's the only issue you have with what they budgeted. Yes, um, in, in our, our review of it, that was our primary concern, Okay, was the amount of capital and being able to, to fund that capital reserve. And when we had the dialogue to reduce the budget from 400 to 360, um, we felt comfortable that that was a fair request um, to, to be able to come down from the 400 to the 360. Um, so you, it, when, you, when you go back to your three to five year budget expectation slides, 2017, as I recall, at 100, your, uh, your, um, this slide? <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, you've got, um, under year, you have uh, EBFC, that's actually West Brandywine's contribution? <coughs> What, this this is all West Brandywine's contribution. Right. It's what okay. we make to EBFC. So it's, it's West Brandywine's contribution to East Brandywine Fire Company. All right. So in 2017, it was 158,000, and that was included, um, as I recall, all of the capital reserves that the fire company was requesting. And then in 2018, as I recall the discussion, um, it, it, we. We, I'm going to say West Brandywine went at it, I think, backwards and said, this is how much we have. The fire company, um, over my disagreement, said, we're going to uh, modify our budget to fit that amount. And it basically, what they eliminated was the capital reserves. And my concern is that we can eliminate the capital reserves, but I think it's foolish in the long term 
because when and, and I've sat through the the, um, the fire company's presentations on their five-year plan um, the, the the problem that we're facing as municipalities is that these fire trucks that 20 years ago were a couple hundred thousand dollars are now over a million dollars mm -hmm. and as these as this equipment wears out and has to be replaced you're talking about huge huge numbers and I certainly don't want to be in a situation of sitting here five years from now listening to a presentation from the fire company about a piece of equipment that needs to be replaced and the capital, the, the contribution from the municipality has to jump up to half a million dollars that year to cover that piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose between having the capital reserves. So um, I, I have to applaud the fire company staff uh, for doing the planning, recognizing the issue, and I think making that part of their budget to set aside capital reserves to handle future equipment needs. And we do not disagree with that at all. We take our hats off to them. That is a responsible way to forecast for the future. You have to build in capital reserves. We, that we're, that's, I think, um, perhaps our broader point is, everything that East Brandywine did, their approach that they took, we, we were supportive. The problem is at the end of the day, it is, it is in production of a fire company that is exceeding our capacity to be able to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's no different than if you need a car, right, and, and you can sit and play around with <laughs> funding models um, all you want if you're at a Mercedes dealer and you can't afford to buy a Mercedes. And, and that's the reality of where we're at, is looking at it and say, we need a car. Well, right? I, I, and here's my problem with that. You, you can't, I, I don't want to be in a position, and I don't think you would want to be in a position of saying to your residents, there, there, there really is no difference in fire service. You can't say that our, our fire companies are Mercedes and you can only afford a Chevrolet because what, what you're suggesting is that we should get volunteers not train them as intensively, not give them the right equipment, and send them out to risk their lives on a fire scene because we decided that we didn't want to burden our, our uh, residents with the expense of doing that. No, and, and I, I think you that's Don't do fair, it with police. But, that's, but that's, that's your interpretation of what that statement is. That's not what the statement is. That's, that's the way well, you decided to interpret it. Now, explain to me then okay. how, it's, how it's different. You're saying... We recognize we have what you're calling an elite fire service, but we can't afford it. So we want, um, I'm, I'm not sure, I know what you want, but I, I, I'm not sure how to address it. Do we say to our fire company, don't take out the, the good equipment in West Brandywine, we can send the Chevy equipment out there. How, do you, how are you gonna do that? Uh, no, <laughs> that yeah. So let me ask you a question. You, you have agreement with Wallace Township mm -hmm. for police services. Yes. If Wallace said, I'm assuming that when you arrived at that agreement, you went through your police costs, you know exactly how much it costs you to put an officer on the road for an eight-hour shift or per year. You, you, your police chief told you, okay, we can cover Wallace Township, and um, this is what it's going to cost. Fully loaded cost. This is what it costs per, per patrol hour. Yep. Right. Yep. And then you went to Wallace and said, okay, we can provide you police service, but this is our cost, so that's what you're going to pay. Yes. So how is this any different? So, so what Wallace has done was they've determined how much service they require for that cost. Right. So that you could, but with police services, you can say, okay, we can afford 12 hours of police coverage a day. Our fire company can't say to you, well, we'll cover you for 18 hours because that's all you're willing to pay for. It doesn't work that way. You don't have that latitude. No, hold on. You, you do have that latitude. Where? The fire, the fire company exists to serve the community. 
the community has to pay its contribution to the fire company at a level that it can pay. And the fire company then has to organize itself to be within the means of what can be sustained. And that's what we are trying to say, right? We have Wagon Town Fire Company that serves half of our township, East Brandywine that serves the other half. We cannot afford to fund at this level. There's a huge difference in funding level between the two fire companies for the municipal contribution. There's a huge difference. We are saying we recognize that East Brandywine is a fantastic fire company. And the reason they are is because they have been supported through the years and they have had great leadership and they have managed it well. We don't disagree with any of that. The problem is that we can't afford to fund it at that level. Now, I said the dilemma is here's a fire company that serves two townships with very different financial positions. Your, if, your, if your township can afford to fund East Brandywine at that level, then I'm very glad for you and I would assume that you would want to provide your, your residents the very best fire service that they can afford. We're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to provide the very best fire service that our township can afford. Those numbers that I shared with you in terms of tax dollars, those are real, right? Those are real dollars coming out of those homes. And this, the, these people don't have anything else left to give. So that's a real impact for them. And it's our responsibility as a board to try to balance that. The last thing I would want to do is not be able to fund East Brandywine at a level that they need to to sustain the level of operation they are. But, but money is an infinite. And I, I can't just continue to raise taxes beyond what they can sustain. So um, I think it's a very clear difference that when that fire company gets formed and, it, and it's operated, it makes a decision about whether it's a Volkswagen or a Chevy or a Mercedes. It makes that decision because it needs the revenue to become it. Um, so our point is we have to provide fire service to our township residents. And we want to provide the very best that we can afford, but it is not an unlimited amount of funds. And, and therefore, at the municipal agreement that was drawn up, and, and you know the numbers about 80% and 5%, we already said there was no rationale in that other than backing into a set of numbers that translated to what we felt with an increase, with a 69% tax increase on top of their huge Coastville school increase this year, right? We're still gonna do it so that we can sustain the fire company for five years. That's the level that we can do it. And, th and that's, that's so, so we said, how can we do it? How can we keep the framework of a, a multi-municipal agreement in place? And how can we ensure that we, uh, we, we fund at our maximum level that we can afford, but we can't exceed that? You had, you had said um, the, the budget funding was 400,000 and I think layman's bring it to 360. What, uh, the fire department, what was their take on? Because uh, I'm this, assuming no, actually the fire company. <laughs> the, because you record your meetings, the fire company's here on that for the first time now. Because we were um, without. I don't think the fire companies were present in the last half of the meeting. The fire company presented their budget, and then we stayed and worked through the model. That was based, that was based on working backwards to get what to where they thought that they could. Because you know, I'm not the liaison for the fire department, but what I'm what I'm wondering is if. If there was a, and, and again, call it what it is, I, I'm just gonna say a shortfall. If there's a shortfall at the fire department, at the fire department of, of 28 or 40,000, if it was 360 to 40, 400, or 400,000 to 360. Right. Um, taking the original budget into play is the fire department, have, but no one's brought it up to them to see um, where, where, for your purposes, they could cut, not corners, but cut No, costs. no, no, they, it's meat. They're, they're, they've got to cut something out. No, not, not to my knowledge, that's not, because we didn't come to an agreement um, across boards. Um, and, you know, I'll cut to the chase on my, my personal thought process to this, is this year, 
last minute we're, we're and I say last minute it's always last minute even if it was three months ago which mm -hmm. I think it was um, yeah it was August yeah. that we met and, and did this um, we're in a position East Brandywine is in a position where we have to say to the fire department we either agree with this or we disagree with 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 the 360 to the 400 the 400 to 360 um, and my belief is sometimes we don't have the luxury of time we think on the fly I would say to our fire department East Brandywine would foot that difference today but the budget numbers have to get hashed out between you and, and the fire department not with us in the fire department so if it's something that you know we, we just kick the can every year and we fight this is there is there in your five-year plan uh, is there increases to the fire department or is there stay steady now I believe it was 2.4 percent or 2.5 Bonnie do you remember the percentage increase that they projected in their budget uh, 2.5 2.5 the fire company mm -hmm. I think it's actually 5% which I have a problem with but I uh, I think it's I think their projected their budget plan is a 5% increase over the next no, five I think years 3% is right. it 3% right. okay Council, 2017 reimbursement levels we stayed with 3% increase thereafter and I think that the the percentage is a great tool here because you know, in a public meeting, if we do all come to an agreement, the percentage speaks for itself, and we're not going to have to do this every year or every two years. And hopefully, and that was our intent. We yep. said we would we would increase our tax enough that the first year or two we would end up with a tiny surplus, that would fund the last two years when it tilted down. Um, so we wanted to be able to raise taxes once, say it's five years. We know that our number, what we can afford, is 130,000 plus. I guess it's the three percent we factored in from from their budget proposal. Bonnie, correct? We we factored in our with the fire company's budget increasing each year. That's how we set what tax increase we would need to have mm -hmm. to sustain us for five years. Yeah. Okay, and then we wouldn't have to have this meeting again for five years as long as the fire company budget was within three percent. I don't think that that's accurate only because that's with this current board. You know what I mean? So if new board members come in, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, could, they yeah. could throw this out the window and Absolutely then we're, we're right. back to, but for, for the purposes of today, we could all agree that we could come up with some type of a, uh, of a yearly um, agreement or by, 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 you know, maybe three years to say the least. Um, the other issue that, that we're not talking about that I think we should bring up is one of the biggest uh, providers in in West Brandywine was the Freedom Village and I know that talk has been had of possibly getting some funding from from Freedom Village I'm curious if anything <coughs> is, has come to fruition with that um, and for those who don't know about it you know I had brought up at our meeting when we did look at the overall calls our fire department uh, East Brandywine fire department did service East Brandywine residents I'll just say five percent more on the fire percent uh, fire percentage calls when it came to the QRS calls, it was 20% maybe more that they were s providing service to, to West Brandywine. Right. So, and one of those big, uh, uh, you know, changing of the scales was, was, uh, um, was Freedom Village. So yes. where, has anything happened with that where Freedom Village is, is aware of this yet or, or been brought up to speed on, on, you know, how they could help or change that? Yeah, and John, do you want to? Um, no, we have not uh, made any traction as, as far as that goes. Um, we still need to reach out to them and, and have a, a discussion. And, and it's something we will. We've actually now just collected the, the data too, and we know um, that 17% of the fire calls and, and almost 36% of all of the QRS calls, of all of these Brandywine's QRS calls are at Freedom Village. Um, so we, uh, we intend to meet with person in charge of Freedom Village, but also to ask them to bring somebody up from their corporate office uh, to be able to have a discussion with us, because um, we don't think in, in the way the numbers team out uh, that that, it, that they're necessarily, um, I don't know if they're aware of what the burden that they have on the community, and to the understanding of what percentage of revenue that they constitute for the percent of services they consume. So hey. we, will, we will certainly meet with them. 
that money that, that uh, and, and I would hope that they would be good stewards of the community and recognize it and, and change their funding level. And if that does, then that's incremental funding for us mm -hmm. that, that would be able to go to the fire companies. Uh, uh, but but hey, at this point, we don't have it. I just want to clarify. So your, your feeling would be that if you're able to get a contribution from Freedom Village, you'll pass that through directly to the fire company and it's not going to offset what your contribution would be otherwise. No, that's right. We're, lo we're looking at the 130,000 that we said is the maximum pressure that we can put on the current community, right? If that money that comes in through Freedom, Freedom Village, then that will be incremental on top of the 130,000 that we're paying because that's money that they're paying directly for a service they're getting and they're getting it through East Brandywine. So again, here at East Brandywine. And let me just verify because I'm, I'm one person that's and exactly our board, right. Um, right. is that, uh, are you guys in support of that? Yes, I, I am. Um, say, say that again, Joe. I was having a sidebar with Dale. We, we've set up a funding formula for what we want to be able to give to the fire companies. Yes. We're going to go to Freedom Village, mm -hmm. and we are going to um, hopefully encourage them to participate more in, in um, supporting the fire companies here. Any money incrementally that we get over top of their current tax they pay would be incremental to our 130000 that that we've earmarked. <coughs> With one additional caveat there, it's uh, we have to balance this between Wagon Town, our ambulance service, and East Brandywine Fire Company. So it it doesn't necessarily a slight all percentage need, might have to go to, to Wagon Town because to they're still servicing Freedom Village as and well. And we can we can adjust services in the future. So it. it it's it may not be exactly the way it is today you know that that could change um, who knows territories could change um, yeah. services provided by different organizations could change um, you know that, but, but, but here let me let me frame it this way so it leaves the maximum flexibility but I think it addresses the, the issue that Jay has no matter what our funding level is across all the fire companies which we're showing here mm -hmm. right if if this were 2018 and Freedom Village gave $10,000, then our total contribution then, instead of being 189, would right. be 199. Right. So we're not saying that we would use whatever Freedom Village gave us and lower what we were going to put as a, as a township. It will be added on. How that gets divvied up from ambulance services, because the ambulances are, are, are there pretty frequently as well, um, how that gets divvied up. Um, we would have that transparency, but but whatever they gave would be incremental. That part, I think, we're... So the answer to the question is yes, I yes. do agree with that. Well, yes. but, but do you, and so just so I understand it, because I wasn't aware of this, ambulances that go to Freedom Village come out of Wagon Town. It's just the QRS that goes to... Yeah, Westwood. it's Westwood, but operates out of Wagon Town. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I don't want to waste too many people's time today I'm one of three. We, we keep saying this, but this is yeah. the truth. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, I've heard can't. I haven't heard won't from you guys, and, but that's good. And you'll hear the same from me. You know, do we have the money to contribute more? And I, and I try to stress this to people. You know, money's a funny thing. You have a bucket of money, and when enough people reach into it, there is no more. And with regards to budget, it may not be that we're better off than West Brandywine. It may mean that we have different mortgages that are getting paid or different, you know, reserve funds set up that are going to different allotted areas. But I don't think it means that we're, you know, this this rich conglomerate either. Yeah, and so, I, I apologize if no, I no, implied no, no, that. No, 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 but I just want, you know, it is. We all have our it burdens is, right, that we're bearing, right. yes. A mortgage is a mortgage, no matter. Yeah. So. So when it comes down to 2018, and I think the shortfall was $28,000 uh, for, 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 for 2018, I think. Um, yes. When you say, last year. Kyle, East Brandywine taxpayer, East Brandywine supervisor, we need, a, we need a helping hand to help pay this fire company this year. Um, I say, you know what, I'll dig deep and we'll find it on our end to make this budget work for this year. But on the same token, the West 
uh, the, the West Brandywine commitment needs to be to Freedom Village to say, our partners, our neighboring townships are helping us continue to have a fantastic fire service. <laughs> we need you guys to help us. To relieve that burden of them. That burden, yes. How, how I envision this happening, if it comes down to this, again, one of three, would be setting up a capital reserve account for this year, and if contributions are made by Freedom Village, then that would go back towards that for this year. That's why I also asked about the 360 to 400,000. If the fire department next year says, you know what, yeah, we can, we can do that, and I don't know that they will say that, then it might change things for, for next year's budget completely. If I can build on that, but, but I think this is where we, we have to be clear because we do want to put something in place that's long-term so that we're not struggling through this every year. Right. right? And there's always big things that happen and always things that have to be addressed. Ideally, we would want to be able to put this in place to be able to say, um, baseline your budget, not at 400,000, but at 360,000 or 370 or 380, whatever you think incrementally your contribution can be to offset that delta from 400, whatever that is, right? Here, here's now what your increases should be based on. And if you stay within those increases based on that for the next five years, then we won't have any budget dilemmas. We won't have any you know difficult meetings that we have to have during the budget cycles. Here's your plan. You have it for the next five years. This is what you can count on coming in. Um, I think we can do that. The problem is we have to get, if, if we're going to use the multi-municipal agreement, then we have to get that down to where those percentages, even though I agree with Jay's comment about you know 80% here year and 20 year, or we get rid of the multi-municipal agreement and we turn around here and say, um, you know, we can terminate that and, and not do it and we'll tell you that we're going to put $130,000 a year for the next five years with a 3% with a increase to East Brandywine Fire Company. And, and that's what we're going to put in place. We can actually tweak the immunity agreement to, to keep us at those percentages that that works, or we can we cannot have it. So I, I will tell you, personally, I would like to at least make an effort to um, continue with the multi-municipal agreement. And so here, or here's what I suggest in, in terms of what we can accomplish today in order to do that. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be very respectful of your time because I know we yeah, thank you. popped this meeting in at the sort of the last minute. Uh, here's what I think we need to do. I think we need to extend the November 1st deadline to give us time to meet with the fire company and um, look at the cost of fire versus QRS, maybe look at some of the other similar agreements and uh, do work on that formula to determine, to, to get it to a level where we both feel comfortable that it's fair and reasonable. But that's not gonna happen overnight, I, I recognize. Yeah. I think we also um, included in that would be a meeting with the fire company because I don't know that and this would be probably a, a joint meeting with all of us again I don't know that anybody else I don't think Kyle and I, I'm not sure about Jason but I know none of you folks have had the benefit of uh, hearing their presentation on their long-term plans how they we have oh so you have you've seen the five-year uh, plan we, we met with them first <coughs> okay. to say Tell us order of magnitude. What is it you're planning? What we want to make sure that it's out over right. an extended period. We did we did see that. And um, so if we I extend the deadline, I think we also have to between us. And I know you have some very capable people like we do take a hard look at that that fire company budget because um, I'm sure there's some items in there that we either need to have explained to us justified or maybe can be modified. But um, my thinking is that if we do all of this, um, where we understand what your funding level is, at least going forward for 2019, but we have to look at how that gets allocated and then what we're paying to, to the uh, fire company. So um, I, 
as I said, I wish we had started this process in March or April. I think part of that discussion when, we, when we're going over the, um, um, the, the formula and modifications to the agreement should be something dealing with those deadlines that are built in the agreement and modifying those as well. I saw that three years ago, so we're already a couple three years into the five-year plan. I know they constantly update it, but I think it would be beneficial then for the three of us to hear that. So we, yeah, Dale and Bonnie, they presented that at the their their five-year numbers were presented at the meeting yeah. on August twenty-second. So yeah, that was part of the uh, that was part of their paperwork. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll make sure if you didn't get a copy. Well, I have a copy. You of have a, a, an older. Okay. I think I have a copy of an older version, but we'll deal with the fire company on that and get that from them. Yeah. Well, but the <laughs> thing is, just from a process standpoint, they showed us their budget. It, it did extend over five years. That's why we knew that there was a three percent increase of, of their capital flowing in, flowing out. So they had a very. They did a great job uh, at putting that budget together. Um, and that was a big part of it so that we then would know what the end was so that we would understand what the implications right. to us at the percentage was and that's what actually then cascaded the conversation so why we, we said we needed to make adjustments so so the the three big follow-ups um, suggested uh, that we extend the November 1st deadline um, to be able to either keep or terminate the um, the multi-municipal agreement, but the, the desire is to try to keep something like that in play and, and put it in place so it covers a longer period of time. Um, well, I share your concern there, and, and I've, I, I don't know if the, the, the correct phraseology is that I, I've bought into the fire company's position, but they really deserve to have a predictable funding source and not be feel like they're on a yo-yo year after year not knowing whether they're going to get funded the next year or not so I I am very concerned about their sensitivity to this issue and I think a long-term plan and I understand that that boards can't obligate future boards but I think once you have that into place you develop the culture around it and, and I, I think that that would it'll, go it'll live on its own if if we do it right and and we do it you know fairly so and I think you know for our board I think we're we're committed and, and we know that at least a number of us are there, two of us are there for at least the next four or five years. So so we have some sustainability at least in this first go around to help solidify that culture. Um, real quick, so so yes. the one thirty for twenty eighteen, is that are we are we playing catch up to get to the twenty eighteen or are we no. talking about twenty nineteen or no this twenty eighteen is already behind us, right? So this one thirty is what we paid for twenty eighteen. Okay. So 20, 2019, it was 130. Um, 2021, 2020, it was 130 plus 3%. Um, okay, so, so there's no shortfall, and this is where, again, I'm not the liaison for the fire department, but there's no shortfall for 2018. The two the, 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 no, there's there no shortfall, shortfall because the, the fire company agreed to modify their budget to handle the funding level that West Brandywine said they were willing to commit. And, and the reason that had to happen was because East Brandywine looked at it and said, well, we have an agreement, we can't pay more, right? So if you can only pay this amount, then our percentage is this amount, so therefore the fire company gets less. And that's in yeah, actuality that's, what happened. Yes, right. I, I agree. Um, but what the fire company did in terms of adjusting the budget is the the that level of funding 100% funded their operational expenses, they took it out of capital reserves. They eliminated a large part of the capital reserves in order to adjust their budget. Okay. So that, and that's my long-term concern here is that by not, by, by uh, eliminating capital reserves year after year, we're just kicking that can down the road and we're gonna have to face that issue sooner or later. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 you know, when, when our finance committee looks at this and, and says, hey, wait, you know, and I know you guys have it as well. You, we've got, you know, millions of dollars of infrastructure that's at risk that, that we need to be building some level of capital reserves to be able to do it. 
and we have depleted ours <coughs> because we're pulling money out of our general fund to be able to pay for the fire services. So we're very glad that the fire company put it in. We recognize that that's a needed part um, because if not, you kick the can down the road and to your point, you, you, you're now forced to spend a half a million dollars in a year to sustain something and you can't do it. Um, so we're, we're all for it, whether that is the right mix or not, whether it takes into account the right strategy on financing capital versus having you know the full capital reserve. I think finance committees can debate that back and forth about what's the, the best way to do it. Um, but, but that's a, a, an argument for a different day. And if um, we do extend this, again, I feel the only one who's getting hurt by the extension is the fire department. I think we have to at least come to some agreement that it's extended for weeks, not months, um, and so that we can try to um, at least give them some closure so that they can plan ahead for their future. Well, my, my thinking was six months for an extension because it, it, we're, we're For all the agreement. Yeah. You want to do a six-month extension for the agreement. Right. Now, I think what we can do is come to an agreement of what we will fund them for 2019. I'm, and I'm including that as part of the extension. We, we're, we would extend it for six months to try to work out all of these details, but with the understanding that your funding is going to be, whatever you said, 130,000, 500, whatever it is. And, and then your decision that you can collectively make as a board is whether or not we'll have them move from 400 to 360 and, and you take this percentage of it or you have some latitude to move between 360 and 400 to that well, a we, little bit extra. We, That's a decision you can make as, a, as East Brandywine's board. The, the agreement, as I understand it, it, specifies a minimum contribution. There's nothing that prevents us from contributing over that. And my reading of that was the same, and that's why last year <coughs> I wasn't sure whether or not, you know, but, but, it, but in, in, in the end, I think your board decided that they were going to lower their contribution as well to stay within the percentages. Right. My reading of it was that it was a minimum contribution, um, and then that, that is a decision that you three can collectively make um, from your budget process. So, okay. So we, we had the um, extend November 1st by six months. That'll allow us then time to adjust the formula uh, and see if we can um, be able to sustain a multi multi municipal agreement. Um, and then we need to set up a series of meetings between us and the fire company to try to work on that formula. I think the first one would be with the fire company in order to get the necessary background information from them about how their their cost structure breaks down between QRS and fire calls. Mm -hmm. Um, and also try to get some uh, uh, some background information on other similar types of agreements um, to work on that formula and meet with the fire company. I, I think um, well, we I think we can defer the decision about meeting with them on the budget specifically. But could sorry, real quick, Luke, you may know the answer to this. Um, and, and I apologize, I'm thinking on the fly here, but the, the, because of the adjustment of the budget from, from 2018 with West Brandywine and the fire company, um, what, what did we reduce our uh, contribution because of the change of, form of, of the funding? So you would like to know East Brandywine Township's contribution for 2018, the current year? So I think what he's asking- What would it have been? What if, would it have been yeah. versus what what we actually paid if the if the municipal agreement had stayed in Okay. Well, so in 2018 the only thing that changed was the total contribution to the fire company. We uh, each year we plug the numbers that make up the 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 elements of the formula in. And so the formula changes each year depending on calls for service in the previous year. I I can tell you what um the current year's contribution from East Brandywine Township would have been based on the ratio for 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can tell you that. I don't know it offhand. Okay. I'm going to zoom out again, <laughs> and I'll do some work and spit it back out to you. Okay. But, but so, you're, far, you're, you're, so far, our contribution for this year's contribution was over 171000 And I believe Mary provided that to Melissa Werner and West Brandywine in an email that I saw yesterday. 
So th that doesn't answer your question. Yeah. But I, yeah, think, I, I think we really need to meet with uh, um, <coughs> Edwards or yep. President Edwards. Yep. Um, and he can tell you the answer to is it that question. He probably hasn't memorized it. Yeah, I know. He, he, well, he knows it. He, yeah. And well, if Ken, he, and if actually, he doesn't, Ken can put his fingers <coughs> on it right away. When, when we're together, if he doesn't, we can actually look at what their, their request was. We know what percentage right. um, the old model had, and we can calculate that out in two seconds once, once we know what last year's request was. Okay. And then just to piggyback off of, off of the um, Supervisor Fisher's statement was, um, you know, if, we're, if we do extend it to November 1st, then also I think a big part of that needs to be the go-between with Freedom Village. Um, I don't think, as much as I'd love to be a part of that discussion, I think they're going to tell me to go pound sand. I'm not a resident of West Brandywine, and, and therefore I shouldn't be putting my hand in the cookie jar. So um, maybe in that six-month period, if you guys would have the opportunity to... We definitely will. Okay. We definitely, within six months, we definitely will have had those meetings with with uh, Freedom Village. And then the last thing is, if we could all agree that a, um, you know, 2.75 to 3% increase uh, yearly would be, um, would, would mean a lot to the fire department who could then, um, you know, plan accordingly for their future. Um, I mean, I'm willing to go on record right here and now to say I have no problem with the 3% per year. Um, but if we could incorporate uh, the percentage into this uh, as well. Again, we're asking the fire department to sit on hot coals for another six months until we can figure this out, um, you know, but at least they would have some closure. To well, that. well, we, we, need, we need to establish, because we have budget processes as well, we, we need to, to firm up what the 2019 contribution is going to be. That we can, we, can, we can do that contribution outside of, the agreement, right? Because it's going to have to go into your budget now um, and be advertised for December. Um, so that part we have to to lock in on. Um, then, in terms of the, the the funding agreement moving forward, as I said, for us, when we said this is our N, that N factored in a three percent increase annually, and it and it factored in enough that we would be able to span over the next four or five years without having these discussions. Uh, my suggestion as part of the extension was that we would agree that that was your contribution for the fire company. Right. 130K. 130, yes. And that's why I'm, I'm saying, um, you know, we have the extension to uh, six months. At, at this point, it's, it's pretty much a moot point. We could, we could agree to, to make it the year, you know, continue the agreement for the year under their current um, um, number. I don't think that that, based off of what I've heard today, is going to change. Um, and we, that you're basically right. Which what we're saying is, by doing the extension and agreeing to the 130 contribution, we're basically throwing the formula out for 2019. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you're right, but I think we, I'm, maybe it's a, it's part of my uh, professional background, but I, I like deadlines. So <laughs> <laughs> when you have a deadline, I mean, you can always extend the deadlines. I, I agree. But let's, it's a motivator let's have a target. To <laughs> cause things to, 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 to happen. That's why I said six months. And I'm recognizing, recognizing that in that next six months, we, we're going to lose a month over the holidays. And But yeah, I think no, it's realistic. I, I, think it's, I think it's realistic. I'm, I, I, again, at the end of the day, there's not a hundred variables here there's a few factors that we right. you know we just have to to come to agreement of how is the best way to equi equitably distribute these costs and in a way that can be the burden can be shared but the burden can actually be borne by by us so um i i think um in, in terms of a, a way to proceed uh do you want us to have our solicitor send something to you or your solicitor a little agreement that says we're going to extend the agreement. This is what your contribution is going to be, and, and that can go either way. Um, we had already had that discussion with our solicitor of saying, you know, we can. We yeah, if you want to have your solicitor way. generate it and send it to ours, that's fine. Have your guy call our guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, we'll do that. <laughs> uh, Mr. 
East Brandywine chairman um, <laughs> to specify that this time. I have the answer to your question if you're inclined to yes. hear it. So um, for the current year, the, the, the split between the three municipalities was 55.57% uh, for um, East Brandywine, 40.7% for West Brandywine, and 3.73% for Upper Euclid Township. Assuming that the full budget request had been funded of 400,000, East Brandywine's share would have been 177,000. Uh, given that 320,000 was approved for the, uh, for the fire company, um, East Brandywine's um, contribution was 177,000. Okay. Um, that's the same number, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Oh, we'll have to get yeah. an answer yeah. your question, but that's yeah. <laughs> both, both numbers were 177. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, if if at 55 percent the full 400 thousand dollars had been funded, it would have been 222 thousand. Yeah. Yes. If that, that at 55 percent which is what happened, 320,000 was approved, it would be 177,000. My apologies if I didn't state that clearly the first time. Okay. Yeah, that <laughs> makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you, on, on behalf of West Brandywine, I, I really want to thank you for the opportunity for us to get together, uh, and I wish that the, the topic were not as... <laughs> No, feel Trouble free to come back. We're having giant hearings real soon. We'd love to have you sit in on it. You no, guys think, are good I think I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I wish you uh, Godspeed in getting that resolved. Uh, thank you very much for thank taking you. the time to meet with us. So, guys, I appreciate do we need it. a motion to adjourn? I so move. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you.